I'm glad you did make it in the, this bad weather this morning. A uh, few announcements. Uh, pastor's on vacation. Uh, second mile giving. Stewardship is given in addition to our regular giving for January to the interchurch ministries. And uh, anyhow, contributions can be made through the month uh, by using your envelope or the ones provided in the Narthex counter. Uh, the Westerville Food Pantry, please consider financial gifts. Uh, in these COVID times, they've been kind of struggling. Uh, it'd be nice uh, if they, they could get some more income. Checks should be made pay payable to M Messiah Lutheran Church, marking Food Pantry on the memo line. Uh, 2022 sponsorships are now available for altar flowers, $30 per vase or $50 per pair. Worship aids are $7 each. Uh, for each service, that is, not each worship aid. Please make sure you fill out the paperwork below the charts and return it to the office with your payment once you sign up for them. Uh, the 2022 offering envelopes are in. They're available in the Narthex. There's a Bible study starting Wednesday, January 12th at 6 p.m. on Zoom and in person, we'll be looking for the first and second letters of Peter. Sign up is in the narthex for that. We're doing a blood drive. Uh, since we're unable to have the blood mobile come out here for various reasons due to staffing uh, of the blood bank, uh, so we can't have them come here. And Messiah is sponsoring a week of donations at the community blood bank at 20, uh, 646 Peach Street. Anyone who volunteers to donate in our behalf should, should do so between January 10th and 14th. Uh, they should sign in and tell the receptionist that you're representing Messiah Lutheran Church. If you have any other questions, you can contact Jean Parker. The, uh, her phone number's in your worship aid under uh, the announcements. Uh, in any case, uh, we're trying to support the blood bank, which has been struggling, and this is really a community health issue, and it's uh, in a dire circumstances. Uh, so anyhow, all the information's on, on this uh, poster. There's another one in the narthex for you to review. Okay, uh, that's it for our announcements. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you and, and your beloved children. children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves and have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us so that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Rejoice in this good news. Our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Live as free and forgiven children of God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God of all people, you You call call many many by name, asking asking them to follow Jesus and obey. obey. Call us by name and and help us to follow and obey. obey. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, I want to apologize. I didn't realize how bad my uh, throat is this morning. It's okay, but it took our hymn to finally get us going here, so thank you. We'll hear the lesson for the day. reading from the Gospel of Matthew. 
beginning at the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east, came to just Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring me word so they may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and he knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts truly be acceptable to you, Jesus, our rock and our redeemer. In his name we pray. Amen. Can you tell me what the date of the festival of the Epiphany falls on each year? I see six raised. We have a we have a winner. If January sixth is the annual date to celebrate the Epiphany, what's going on here as we are celebrating it today? And with that thought in mind, I thought it would be worth our time to take a close look about the day we are supposed to be celebrating on January 6th, and then the season that followed the Epiphany. Guess what? Historically, the festival, the Epiphany, is the oldest season of the liturgical church year. It's supposed to be next to Easter, in importance. Imagine that. So what's going on since this is January 2nd and January 6th falls on Thursday of this week? Why are we doing this on January 2nd when the visitation of the wise men and the celebration of that day was established as January 6th? The epiphany in its re season was attached to the winter solstice, which was a pagan festival celebrating the birthday of a god, a sun god. In 331 BC, before Christ, the solstice was moved to December. We are well aware of that. 
But January 6 continued to be observed as the Epiphany Day. The Christian church substituted Epiphany for the winter solstice. The obvious reason was because a star had appeared. That was the new light. There had been darkness in Israel until Christ was born. When December 25th was finally chosen as the date to celebrate Jesus' birth and give it festival status, the Western church wanted to raise the importance of the Magi's arrival in Bethlehem, which had taken place at least one year after he was born. By this time, the Holy Family was in a house. That's why you don't hear it as a stable. It's artists and playwrights who write pageants and paint Christmas stories that love putting the three wise men right at the stable. In the liturgical churches like ourselves in the calendar year, Epiphany Day is to be observed similarly to Christmas and Easter and Pentecost. Are you getting this? In fact, in the Roman Catholic Church, the day of the Epiphany is a day of obligation to attend Mass. So why is Messiah Lutheran observing the festival of the Epiphany today instead of on Thursday, January 6th? Liturgically, this year, it would be happening on Thursday. So let's be honest. Most churches can't get their people out to a midweek service. It's the same problem we have with other festival days that fall midweek. Do you know some of those? The Ascension of our Lord is a major festival day, but it always falls on a Thursday because it falls 40 days after Easter. So it's always going to be on a Thursday. Even the Festival of the Reformation, which is October 31st, that day floats throughout the week, correct? And so we find ourselves celebrating Reformation Sunday on the Sunday closest to October 31st. So the same thing happens for All Saints Day. It floats because it's always November 1st. Messiah's secretary, Cindy, informed me that the cluster of con congregations to which a Messiah belongs used to, I guess, celebrate the Epiphany, the Festival of the Epiphany, together. So you have to get all the churches. Maybe you can get one good attendance out of all the congregations. If we celebrate the Epiphany on the Sunday, then it happens only once every six years. Now, as I've been talking, have you noticed that I keep using the word festival and celebrate when talking about special days that the church observes? What comes to mind when you hear the word festival or celebrate? Do you think, are you excited? Do you, do, do you anticipate that? Do you go into all extra kind of planning when there's a festival happening? And doesn't a lot of good food come along with it? How many of you sent out epiphany, car epiphany cards? I don't think so, right? How many of you ever have attended a cantata that was about the epiphany? I don't think so. Now, they do exist, from what I understand. But that would be asking the choirs and the music people in our congregations to plan for Christmas and the Epiphany almost at the same time because they happen so close together. So back to the meaning of our Epiphany. The number of Sundays and weeks in the season depends upon the date of Easter. If Easter's early, Epiphany season is shorter. 
if Easter is late, then the season of Epiphany lasts longer, from six to nine weeks. In liturgical churches like ours, the color of the day or season denotes the mood of that day and season. White is the color of Epiphany Day, the baptism of our Lord, which will be celebrated supposed to be celebrated on January 1st, but it will be celebrated next week. See how that's all coming down? And the other White Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday. White expresses light and glory and victory and celebration. Then we will move to green, which is used for the rest of the days of the Epiphany season, and for Pentecost because both of those seasons are about growth, the growth of the Christian church, the growth of us as disciples in Christ. We are to grow into a fuller realiza realization of who Jesus Christ is. And the lessons of that this epiphany season always point to Jesus and to reveal to the listeners and the readers who this Jesus of Christ is and what his ministry and life is all about. I loved it when years ago they came up with the phrase, aha, that epiphany is the aha season. You know, you think of the cartoons with the little circles over people's head and they go, aha, ah, that's a great thought. I never thought of that. Or thanks for reminding me about that. That's really good news. That's what the epiphany season is all about. In my opinion, the festival of the Epiphany and the season of Epiphany get short-changed because all the time and energy that is put into celebrating Advent and Christmas. Like I said, what are we asking our people to do if we try to get ready for a Advent and Christmas and Epiphany all at the same time? I've already mentioned that we use the word celebrate and festival when talking about special days that, of the church. They are special days. And if we could use other words to attach and describe what the festival of the Epiphany is and the season is all about, I would use the word, the letter W. The word W, I mean the letter W. And the first word I would use would be worship. The second word I would use as a, with a W would be witness, and the final W would be win or winning. Now, don't panic. I am not going to unload each one of those Ws. That's why you have that special insert that was handed to you in the, with the bulletin. It's all about worship. All I will say right now is how those three words, worship, witness and winning are related to each other or connected. The epiphany season is a time to strengthen our own individual stories about our relationship to Christ and about Christmas and about the wise men coming, about the shepherds hearing the good news and sharing that good news. Because the business of the church, if we want to call it a business, the business of the church is first to worship and then to witness and then to win others for Jesus Christ. That they would come to know him as Lord and Savior. Now I want to just zero in on that first word, worship. That's again why you have that answer. Take it home. Look at it. Meditate on it. It's a wonderful, it came in the last pages of our daily bread in the November section. So please take it seriously. When I got the message from Pastor Piccarelli that Messiah would be observing the festival, the Epiphany, and that the only lesson would be Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, I read this very familiar passage. I thought about how many times have I read that passage or have heard that passage read. It's one, it's a beautiful passage, isn't it? 
So I asked the Holy Spirit to speak to my heart about what the Spirit wanted me to say this morning on January 2nd, the festival day. And the first thing that I heard the Spirit say was what you've already heard, all this epiphany stuff and the whys and the wherefores of setting aside this special day to remember the Magi. I looked at my resources on the meaning of this season and took some notes. So each day that I would set aside to prepare for this message this morning, I read the Matthew passage again. And then, all of a sudden, it hit me. Why does the new Revised Standard Translation that I was using in my preparation use the word homage instead of the word worship? The word that I thought was always used in most translations. If anything, I thought that homage, homage was just another word for worship. Amish wasn't a new word for me because it had become so familiar. But why wasn't the word worship used here? So I went to online. I'm getting a little bit better at that. And I went online and I found this. Homage, a special honor or respect shown publicly. But I don't consider honoring and respecting, even publicly, to be worship necessarily, right? So I kept on pulling, and that's the neat thing about going online on the internet, and came across an article by a professor at Princeton Theological Seminary, a pastor, a teacher. His name is David. Davis, who in 2011 had the same experience that I was dealing with this word homage. He, quote, figured out that in modern Bible translation, homage was left in the story of the wise men because it was such a classic, old, venerated expression. But then Pastor Davis opened his King James Version of the Bible and to his surprise did not find the word homage at all. Pastor Davis then shared what he discovered. Quote, it's not a word you hear every day. It's fun to say. It makes the old story sound so much more fancier, so much more formal, so literary, so much more more biblical. Homage never appears in the King James Version. He shared that the Greek word is translated through the Gospel of Matthew as worship. He shared that the word homage waters down the faithful response of worship, the, the three kings that came to worship Christ. It diminished the faith, faith-filled transformation in the hearts of the wise men from the east who came and knelt down and worshipped the Savior, the Messiah, Christ the Lord. They worshipped the newborn king in their hearts. They worshipped him. They didn't just pay him homage. Then I found what Pastor Davis shared next so eye-opening. He writes, So what's with the homage? It's because Herod is in the house. Hang on to that phrase. Herod is in the house. Not right there in the house where Mary and Joseph and the baby now reside. Herod is in the house all through the story of Matthew. Amish has everything to do with Herod. Before the wise men came, the story is all about Herod. It's his turf. I would add to what Pastor Davis came up with that they came to, again to worship a king. They came to present Jesus' gifts, not Herod. A few years late ago, you began, we began to see an image kneeling before our mangers. What image was that? Even figurines are now, you can purchase them. 
Santa Claus. When you think about it, that's a perfect way to depict Santa Claus or any other person that we have raised up to be so important, almost like a hero, almost like a god. And that led me to remember the words of Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, that Jesus, the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and confess him as Lord. If you were to ask people today what happened on January 6th, many USA citizens would say what? That's the day there was an insurrection on our democracy that took place on January 6th, 2021. I would tell them that that was a modern day epiphany because Herod was in the house, a person who tries to raise up followers who say, who pay him homage and even maybe even to the level of worship Remember, ultimately, every knee will bow and worship. Not just pay honor and respect, but worship the one born in a stable, born in Bethlehem, who grew up and pleased God and humankind so much that they favored him, who eventually grew up and died on a cross for the forgiveness of our sin and rose again that we might worship him and that everyone who believes in his name might have the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. Let us pray. Lord God, may this epiphany season open up our mind and our hearts with all kinds of ahas so that we may become true worshipers who can witness to others and win and help them to believe in the Christ child, the one who came to save us from our sins. In his precious name we pray. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and a Christian throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of wanderers, you sent the Magi from afar to witness the mystery and majesty of your birth. Send us into the world with your will in our hearts and on our lips. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You sent the Magi to follow the star into an uncertain future. May all leaders and people seek your face, especially when paths are not clear, conflicts rage, tyrants oppress, and fears abound. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You sent the Holy Family to seek safety in a new land. Protect all who make similar journeys. Send your guiding spirit to asylum seekers, refugees, and all who journey towards safety. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Healing God, during this lingering pandemic, we pray that the spirit will guide us to show patience, exercise flexibility, and care for our neighbor's physical and spiritual well-being. Inspire in us a spirit of sacrificial love and concern for one another, especially for the most vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Healing one, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially Bishop Michael Lozano, and those on our prayer list, and those we will now name in your presence. Abby Joy. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with illness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you, especially Ray Brace, George Heyer, Dorothea Hiles, Donald Hiles, Ira Bartlett, Richard Siebercrog, James Soft, Elizabeth Seward, Harold Jones, Beatrice Olazewski, and James Boniger. Make us confident that your promises endure forever. Merciful God. 
We pray for peace in the world and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love, made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer the sign of peace to everyone. Peace of the Lord be with you.
Let us now prepare as we uh, receive Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This blood is given to you for the remission of, sh of your sins. Receive it for the forgiveness of your sins. Let us pray with confidence, as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power Come to the God's table, there is a place for you and enough for all.
dry, for God's blessing. May the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks, for we have feasted on the abundance of your love. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless us in our coming in, in our going out, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.